Hello YouTube world and welcome to Roomcast. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate casting runes in what may be a different way than you're familiar with. Uh, we're going to be casting lots today and I'm going to show you how to cast runes in this manner. These are staves, rune staves. Um, there's 24 of them and a little bit later in this series I'll show you how to make your own rune staves and load them and uh, make them correctly. But these are my rune staves and I'm going to show you how I work with rune staves. Most of you are probably familiar with rune stones which are in this bag. These are rune stones. Uh, but rune staves are the way that I like to cast runes. Um, an old friend of mine about 30 years ago, a fellow runester, much like you and me, um, I came across him and he said, you know, you can, you don't have to work with the stones or the tiles. And I was kind of taken aback, how, how else do you work with runes? And he, um, he said, let me show you something. He took out a box of wooden matches. He said, you can cast runes with anything virtually. Um, basic household items. Um, here's this box of matches, for example. And I said, well, show me what you mean. And so he took out the matches and uh, threw them out onto the table. And the way the matchsticks crossed, he said, you see, the matchsticks make this rune and that rune, and, and there's your reading. And it was mind-blowing to me. Um, and ever since I've been shown that method, uh, I've been fascinated with that method of casting runes. Um, it goes back to the old days of shamanism when ancient shaman um, threw things down on the ground and were able to divine on how and where they fell and which object went where. Um, many shaman use bones. They throw the bones out and uh, look at how the bones land. Um, it's really um, an amazing way to do divination and um, it has always spoke with me since that moment. It kind of blew my mind. And I said, well, how many matchsticks do you need to use? He said, you need a minimum of five. So if you have five, um, you know that they can form pretty much any rune in the runic alphabet. And so, um, of course, runes, uh, standard set of runes is 24. So when you make your staves, you're gonna make 24 of them. Um, but today, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do a basic room casting this way with simple objects that you can find around the house. Um, when you set up, you always want to face north. I will show you here. This is my compass. Um, it's very important that when you're casting rooms that you face north. So I have my little compass here, and yes, we are facing north, so we are good to go. Um, and that's just for energy purposes. You want to go where the magnetism of the earth is going. You want to be in that flow. That's where you want to go, especially when you're divining or working magic. Um, so here we have an old child's game, which just goes to show you um, how ingrained this method of divination really is. It's been carried forward to the present day in a child's game called Pick Up Sticks. Um, you know, normally you won't be divining with pickup sticks, but today we're going to, and I'll show you how. Of course, just like my friend said, you can use uh, some wooden matches. Any five sticks will do, or more. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm going to pick out five of these pickup sticks. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to cast them on the cloth and show you how a reading of runes can be done in this manner. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to have your cloth, right? Uh, this is my standard three foot by three foot cloth, which is, you know, been handed down to us. And that's the uh, dimensions and it's white. This has also been handed down for thousands of years as the type of cloth to cast on, um, a white square cloth. If you notice, I have it folded in fourths, so it's just yay big for this little demonstration. For more intense reading where I'm using uh, my staves, 
um, I will use the full three foot by three foot dimension and cast them onto that cloth. But for this demonstration here, we're gonna use these five, and it always makes me smile when I see these at the store. I'll come across them every once in a while and I always pick up a set just because it reminds me of uh, how this method of divination was carried down the generations through the ages. It was preserved and saved even through all the suppression that went on for a thousand years of the ancient ways of our European shaman. It did come down as this little game kind of hidden in plain sight. And um, so here we go. When you're casting staves, we're going to be casting down onto the cloth. Sometimes you'll get a reading, sometimes you won't. Um, but you definitely always want to call to the Norns. The Norns are the ones who guide our futures. There's uh, past, she's called Erd. There's Verdande, she's uh, the present. And then there's uh, Schuld, who represents and helps weave the future. So we're going to call to the Norns now. Erd, Verdande, Schuld. And we're going to throw them down. Okay. So they kind of fell. This one here is kind of making a room, but not really. So I'm going to pick them up, and I'm going to try one more time again. Throw them down here. Let's take a look at what we have. Um, we have some incomplete runes showing here. Um, we don't have a one clear rune. So I'm gonna try it one more time. But you can see some things forming here. Is this a broken Fehu rune that's kind of up here? Is this Kinaz but inverted this way rather than this way? Um, what's going on here? We really can't tell. We're gonna ask for a clearer picture. Okay, this is a little more interesting here. Okay. So we see the ninth rune, we see Hagalaz. That's pretty much uh, completely formed. We don't see anything else really here. This rune landed almost out of frame. So I'll pick it up and I'll put it here. This rune by itself is kind of shoring up. And the angle of this almost makes me think that it was almost trying to go that way for a Fihu rune. But for this reading here, we're just going to see the H rune, the ninth rune, which is Hagalas. So I'll bring out my little whiteboard here and draw it for you so you'll see. Hagalas looks like that. It is the ninth rune in the order of the Futhark. And it means change. It means disruption. Um, if I were doing this in a reading, um, kind of like I am today, this means an ordered change of things, you know. Um, it, it symbolizes um, uh, a change and a disruption of the normal uh, status quo. Something that's ordered, that's necessary, that's bound to happen. It's a natural thing. Um, so, you may have felt like I did all those years ago when I saw the runes cast this way and decide to change the way that you read the runes. And that's my message for today.